A whole chicken and some baby potatoes all cooked at the same time in the same 12-inch cast iron skillet in the Ninja Foodi XL Pro air frying oven. And take my word, it makes for an excellent centerpiece for your table. And uh, I think you're going to be impressed. I'm John Sanders, also known as Jelly007. Let's uh, cook up some chicken and potatoes. All right, so like I said, a centerpiece. That's what this meal will be. That is a little over a four-pound chicken. And then I have these uh, Melissa's Baby Dutch Potatoes, which I love. I've used them before. We're going to do nothing but put a little bit of butter and uh, salt, pepper, and lorries on it. And I think that uh, the, although there's a million ways you can do it, you may have other things you want to put on your chicken. But take my word, that works real well. The other thing you may be wondering about, is this right here. This is a large 12-inch uh, skillet. That's what I call it. And you may be wondering, but as you can see, it fits perfect. I have a million ideas for what I'm going to do with this in there. And I love cast iron. I think it blows most other uh, uh, materials on the market away. Cast iron works better than anything. Now, I have re-seasoned that. It comes seasoned, but I seasoned it again. We're about to get this chicken ready. I'm going to put a little bit of butter, and we're going to get it on there. We're going to get these potatoes coated with a little bit of butter. I'm going to put some uh, uh, lorries and salt and pepper on it, and we're going to make this happen. I'll be back. Okay, so everything's ready to go. That's been in there a little over than 15, maybe oh, it's been in about 20 minutes, the skillet, at 350. And I, by the way, I've decided to lower the cooking temp to 300. But what i got to do right now, I've got the chicken ready. It's rubbed down with butter. So are the potatoes. I'm going to pull this out, get all of it set up right here. And we're going to go back in this oven. And like I said, lower the temp. In fact, I'll leave that door down. I'm using my meter probe, and again, i got to make sure everything looks good here, and it does. I'm using, you probably can't see it, but I'm using the meter probe. I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. But it's in the chicken already. I'm going to put the chicken in first because I want it to uh, be able to put those potatoes in. But you can hear that, and that sounds good. I'm going to go ahead and... Just lay potatoes around it like this right here, as many as I can get in there. And I might not get them all, but it's no big deal. I, I don't want it sitting on any uh, potatoes because they may not get done and uh, there'll be plenty for what me and baby doll need. So I'm going to try and get them all in there though. Or I don't want to, you know, I don't want to crowd them too bad. As a matter of fact, that may be as far as I go with them. Now, by the way, I took the chicken, leg, the wings, like I always do, and I kind of tucked them under to where they're locked under so they won't, uh, you know, flop up <laughs> and kind of dry out. But I'm going to touch up right here where I touch. And by the way, I did that again right here a while ago, and it may affect the way the chicken looks at the end, but it's not. Take my word. It don't matter how it looks. It's how it tastes. <laughs> but... There goes my black pepper, and I'm going to put just a little bit more right here. It's all kind of for looks, not going to lie, some of it is. It's all to, to make it look good. So I'm leaving three potatoes out of that bag. That's not a bad, that's not bad. But right now, I'm going to put my glove back on because I guarantee you that, uh, that cast iron, <laughs> it's hot. I just remembered, too, i got to get this in, so I've got time to do that. I'm going to put that in right there and get this on. Now, I will be double checking with my thermopen just to make sure we're at safe temps. But right now, here we go. Press start. And we are off and running. So I'm going to, well, we'll see how long it takes. But you see, we're at Target's 165. Uh, oven temp is 300. So. I will uh, be back. All right, one thing I have decided to do was to put, I mean, I've got it. I might as well use it. I'm going to just drop it right here without burning my hand, hopefully. I'm going to drop it right here 
in this side of the oven, I feel positive once it melts, it'll get wherever it needs to be. And I kind of meant to do it. I, I, thought, I thought about it, but I didn't do it. But now I have. Now we're back and running. But that's about, that's a whole stick of butter I've used up between the chicken and the potatoes and now what will be in the bottom of the pan. So there you go. And, and one last thing, before I forget to mention it, I'm on whole roast. I, I forget, I forgot to mention that setting it up, but I'm using the whole roast function, which is wide open fans, all the heaters and all running. So now you know. It's probably been in five minutes. I got a timer started. I just started it, but add five minutes to that and we'll know about how long it takes. All right, we're two degrees away. Whoop, no we're not. <laughs> it just ended at one hour and 18 minutes. And let me make sure everything's going, and I think it is. I'm going to slide that out. <clears throat> kind of caught me off guard. And we're going to do a a thermal pin check and make sure I got it stabbed in the right place because this it, it scales what I do. That's why. <laughs> so we're going to open it up, see what it looks like, and do a temp check. So you can see right there, it does not look bad. It looks like a really good centerpiece chicken. 150, well, you can't see what I can see. I got 162, 163, and I'm kind of tearing it up a little bit, but we're going to do it again. And I'm not sure you can still can't see it, but we're 165 everywhere. And uh, I mean, I haven't seen anything below that. There comes 161, 160. All right, I saw 160 right there. And it's because where I've got it stabbed. And uh, I know carryover is going to take it to there, but I'm going to leave it in that oven for a minute and let it take it there. And whether I run it or not, I don't know. But right now, we're going to let it sit in there. Uh, that's where I'm going to let it rest, in other words, for about, uh, we'll say, 15 minutes. So at 135 or one hour and 35 minutes, let me you can see what I'm pointing at. We will take it out, temp it again, and cut it. Be back. See y'all then. All right, we are close enough to the 135 mark right here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to move this right here and put this glove on, and I'm going to pull it out. And then we're going to uh, see what we got. <laughs> Let me you know what I better undo this first. And so you can see what's in the bottom of that. It looks it looks good. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be. So there that is. What I'm going to do is, uh, as a matter of fact, let's set this right here. And I'm going to take the chicken out of there. Kind of like this. Whoops, didn't mean to do that with that potato. I'm going to set it right here. And then I'm going to, uh, there's a little of the skin off the chicken came off, but, and I'm going to move these potatoes or, you know what, we're probably going to mash them right there. I'm going to roll them around a minute like that. Okay, so right quick, <laughs> let's see how the potatoes do. And they break excellently. You can, Hopefully you can see that. Uh, they're going to absorb all that chicken broth and that is real broth and real butter and you can see what i'm doing i'm just pressing them a little bit making them break that's all and uh they're going to be uh well you can imagine they're going to be really good i'm going to roll them around a little bit and splash them around a little bit in there and then uh put them on a plate and by that time we'll start uh cutting this chicken up all right just for the record 173 that's where the chicken's at let's let's check one more time with the with the thermopan uh 175 174 173 and 171 so we are definitely good to eat i'm going to put it back in there and then i'm going to try and slice it around a little bit but you can see that is going to make an excellent those potatoes are buttered and ready and smashed uh, it's just gonna be hard to beat 
All right, I don't think you can find a better serving dish than this. It's still very warm. You can see the potatoes are smashed and absorbed up, have absorbed some of this butter up. So I'm going to make sure that happens just a little bit better. And then I'm going to pour out the excess butter. Maybe I'll re reserve it somewhere, but then I'm going to put that chicken back in there. I'm going to make some slices on it. I'm going to make me some YouTube pictures, and then we're going to taste all of that. But I, I ain't got to taste these potatoes to tell you they are excellent. But anyhow, I will confirm that for sure in just a minute. All right. It, it took me a minute to get everything done, but take my word. Yeah, you can tell by looking, that chicken is excellent. And we're about to taste some potatoes like this one right here, which is... as perfect as potatoes get and cooked in chicken broth and butter <laughs> i don't need to tell you i mean i know you know that is a good potato and you can see i haven't touched the chicken so i'm about to do that in fact let's do it right here comes the chicken leg if i can find that joint and i'm pretty close Right there, as a matter of fact, it it looks, this is where you always see red. That's why I cut this off first. This is where you kind of usually see red, you know, if it's not done, whatever, I'm getting that, but I'm going to drip some on the floor for you. <laughs> but that is perfectly done. And excellent chicken. The breast. is just just as good you can see right there in fact i'll make one more cut down close to the bone and very 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 hot this is cooled down a little bit but you can see it is uh perfect cooked chicken and uh take my word that chicken and these potatoes will get done many many times but i have a lot of plans <laughs> for this 12 inch uh, uh pan skillet cast iron skillet pat cast iron pan what do you want to call it many many ideas for uh the ninja xl pro whatever you want to call it uh stuff like well i could go on well you i don't have to tell you you know uh cornbread m many many things so these potatoes are as good as a chicken and I promise you that is some really good eating. Anyhow, hey. <laughs> I love y'all all. And uh, y'all come back to see me. Cook it. Get you one of these pans. Here, Here's the, uh, I'm going to hold it up here where you can kind of see. It's just a 12 inch uh, lodge pan. Again, I wish I could remember where I got it. I've, I've done so much shopping recently. I, I want to say Walmart, but I'm not positive. But there's there's all you look for is a lodge cast iron 12 inch cast iron pan. That, that's what it's called. There's a, a item number L10SKL. So, I mean, you, you, you'll be able to find it if you search that model number for sure. I'm, I know I'm going too far on that. I love y'all all. Come back to see me and y'all have a good night.